Hi and welcome to this week's Money Monk Monday. Now you're going to want to watch this video if you can't rest, if you're constantly on, if you can't enjoy yourself easily, if you can't deeply relax and take time out. So this is about a business client that I have been working with. And I'm going to take you on a journey deep into their unconscious patterns. And again, you won't get this information easily anywhere else because most business coaches and investing coaches know nothing about this stuff. So first of all, this lady has done really well for herself. She has built a successful business. She's well known. She has status. But she is burnt out and her health is suffering and her mental health is suffering and this is an important subject because most business owners certainly and are faced with <laughs> having to look after their health while building businesses and many business owners don't do it very well as a result of that, their health is compromised, their ability to think effectively gets downgraded. I mean, a healthy body and a healthy mind is really important because when you have a healthy body and a healthy mind, it's way easier to make really good quality decisions. So this person has spent their entire life building business they're incredible at their ability to plan. They've got a high achiever. Anyone with a high achiever, you're out there, you're really wanting to create goals for yourself and you're out there pursuing those goals. You've got ambitions. You know, you, everyone watching this, you know, some people have more of the achiever self than others. The achiever self, when it's functional, is pushing you to achieve outcomes that you want. It's pushing you to evolve past your uh, present state of inertia, your comfort zone. So the achiever self is really important. The human species wouldn't have evolved or grown without it. The achiever self gets through challenges, finds solutions. And the achiever self is often, you know, it's associated with what we call the driver subpersonality. So it drives you, drives, drives, drives. This particular person is also an amazing goal setter, amazing planner, got really good logic, like a lot of good business people. They can evaluate, analyze. A lot of good investors have that as well. And so those attributes are really important if you're a business person or an investor. However, if you are only in your planner, your organizer, you achieve it, achiever, constantly in logic, constantly driving yourself and constantly pursuing your goals, something happens. You are imbalanced. So you will deplete. You will start to wear out. Your immune, immune system will suffer. You'll experience inflammation. You'll experience tiredness. Your, uh, <laughs> all your health markers will drop. And, you know, those health markers dropping, those symptoms are warning signs to tell you that you're not living correctly. So if you were living correctly, you would have greater levels of health. But the problem for this person and anyone with this particular pattern is you will override the warning signs of your body and keep going on with the plan of the achiever, with logic, being driven, pursuing goals. And the health gets worse. The mental state gets worse. You, the way you treat people will get worse. Don't know about you, but have you observed when you get run down, it's harder to be nice. Things irritate you. But essentially, you'll also end up making poorer decisions. So we consider that the dysfunctional achiever. 
So then I'm going to move this way a little bit. On the opposite side, and this particular person, they never met this side of them, or very rarely did they meet this side of them. They have a strong capacity for being, a strong capacity for creativity. In fact, they are incredibly creative. They're incredibly artistic. They are a developer of beauty. So when we talk about a developer of beauty, you, you may know people like this, where they cook beautiful meals. You know, you go into your house, their house, and they've, their house is beautiful, and they cook a beautiful meal, and they've got nice wine, and, and uh, they've got beautiful music playing. Some people just have that gift of giving beauty to others. And, well, this person has that in spades. They have a strong being side. Apart, they can just relax and rest. However, as I said before, they never go to this side. <laughs> never. So when they go on holidays, it takes them 10 days to feel okay about resting. This person will take holidays once a year. But when they get on holiday, they're like this, they're nervous. All this emotions running through their body and they feel all wired and they're They've got to do things and this particular person sits down and plans more and on her holiday she starts planning and goes back to goal setting. You can feel the energy of me when I communicate about that. It's wired. Okay. We'll take this a little bit further because the stuff on this side, planning, achieve, a logic driven and goals, belongs to what we call the masculine domain. So this is not about male and female. We call it masculine and feminine energy. If you're a into TCM, traditional Chinese medicine, it's yin and yang. Masculine energy is about conquering, going out there and achieving goals, fighting the fights, moving into challenge. And that's really important in regards to moving out and creating in the world. Overcoming challenges. But this side... This side is considered the feminine attribute, or yin, in the Taoist philosophy, which underpins traditional Chinese medicine. And in the feminine aspect, it's incredibly nurturing. So anyone that is creative knows when they follow their creative pursuits that they feel deeply connected to what they're working on. They feel at peace, they feel rejuvenated, they feel filled up. So this person, in the few times that she allowed herself to paint, she said, I just feel so peaceful, I feel so at home, I leave it just feeling so light and happy. Well, that's what happens when you move into the feminine side of your nature. And when you move into the feminine side of your nature, you rest. It's explorative. You're not in planning. You're not in achieving. You're not in logic. You're not being pushed by your driver's sub personality. You're not goal hungry. You're just being and doing whatever it is that you do. And I'll, I'll use a metaphor here to kind of explain this a little bit better. We now live in a world where uh, there's a, a, a tendency or a movement towards a really good balancing of the male and female energies within the individual. So I'll use myself as an example here. I still have the ability to totally live on this side. I have the ability to kill. I have the ability to hunt. I have the ability to be aggressive, go for my goals, protect my family. That belongs to the masculine side of the energy system. It's not about male and female. Plenty of women can live out of the masculine side. This one here does all the time. Out there fighting the good fight, conquering the beasts. This side here, I have easy access to that as well. Mine's a little bit different. When I'm in my feminine energy, I'm reading people. I'm connecting with them. I am soft. 
I can express my love to my family, I can have sensitivity for people that are suffering. Women now can go out into the world and conquer like a man can. So what we have now is a bit of a different dynamic happening in the world. In the old days, what would happen is men, because of their biology, meaning they had bigger physical bodies, were stronger, tended to be going out hunting the big beasts and protecting the family and the village from the raiding hordes. The women would stay at home, uh, gathering berries, cooking, looking after the home. And the men would go out, fight the war, protect the family from the raiding hordes, and they'd be in that. After a while of being in that, they'd be burning out. So they would come home, and they'd come home to the women who were, for the most part, in their feminine energy, and the women would be nurturing the men, thankful for them going out and protecting and fighting and bringing the beasts back. And the men would drink, relax, have fun with their family, enjoy the nurturing and love from the feminine, and they would go back out into the world when their cup was filled up. And in doing that, there was sustainability. Nowadays, as I said, because I'm taking this to a, a bit of a more, uh, what we consider a global level outside of the individual, we have men and women working, both going out in the masculine, getting burnt out, coming home, and there's no one doing the nurturing. So there's a dynamic to work out in that way. So society itself can lead to burn out at this point because of what's happening with the changes of the sexes. But I get back to this individual. So because this individual, within her own consciousness, would only keep living in this, she burnt out, low energy, over it. But as I said, she wouldn't allow herself to be in this. In fact, in her ego structure, she had all these psychological defense mechanisms. So as I was trying to connect her with this part, I would watch the diversionary gains. And again, <laughs> when you work with your normal business coach, <laughs> good luck. They don't see any of this. So, by not going to that, as she gets older, she's going to kill herself unless she addresses this. And she's also unhappy. She's in a position where she's got status, she's got financial abundance, and she's well known, and her ego hangs her hat on that, and you'll see why in a second. But she's not happy, she's not fulfilled, she's not doing what she loves. Because she builds her business just out of the masculine. Just out of that quadrant I'm showing you, of that, sorry, that half. So if it's unsustainable for her, it also means it's unsustainable for her business. So this here, again, the feminine aspect of consciousness being creativity, artistic development of beauty, rest and relaxation, connection to nature, having fun, enjoying yourself, that creates joy, that creates a sense of love, it's sustaining, it's refreshing, and it's rejuvenating. So go back to the metaphor I shared with you before, and you can see from a metaphoric perspective, like I said, we now have males and females out playing masculine roles, coming home, and there's no heart or hearth. The hearth of the fire is symbolic for nurturing, restoration. So we have all sorts of people in depletion. All sorts in depletion. So I was really interested in why she wouldn't go here. So <coughs> from a logical perspective, she would always go, oh, I don't have time. <laughs> She's in her 50s. She's never had time to go into it. I never had time. I knew that wasn't the reason. As I said, this is just an ego game. It's a defensive mechanism. 
My job is to help her become a better business person. That's why she's come to me. But to be a better business person, I have to get her operating better. I have to get her operating out of joy. I need her to connect to this part. And this is compulsive. Being in this for her is just compulsive, and you'll soon see why. Now, so if she can move into the feminine aspect, what will happen is not only will she rebuild her immune system, not only will she rebuild her physical energy, but she will also rebuild her psychology. Because once you rebuild your physical system, you also rebuild your psychology. And from the feminine space, she will get new ideas, fresh insights and inspiration. It will inform her about what's next. Funny, and I hadn't thought about this when I was preparing for this, but over the last two weeks, I've had this kind of weird uh, feeling personally. And uh, typically, I'm very instinctive in how I run my business in the sense that in the same way as I read people, same as I can read you, the same way that reason that I can do this work where other business coaches can't is because I am highly practiced in engaging this side of my being because it informs me instinctively and intuitively. Because as an example, I'm in this when I read people. You can't be in this and read people. So masculine yang is external, challenge, goals, Fight the fight, protect, go for what you want. This, as I said, is restorative yin, it's receptive. I am receiving when I relax. I am receiving when I paint. I don't paint, right? but that's this particular person. When she paints, she's receiving while she gives. And from that space, the intuition works. Your instincts say, this is next. Ah, this is what I need to do. And as I said, I've been disconnected from my instincts because I've um, <laughs> been doing a lot of work in this. And personally, I, I am concerned as a business person when I disconnect from instincts. And instincts are way more powerful for me than this. Instincts come first. You'll hear me say this a lot. I'll access my intuition. Then I come back with my logic. People that access their logic because they're in the masculine don't access their intuition. But intuition is far more powerful. Instinct's far more powerful in its in, in its um, perception of direction, in its knowledge, and its understanding. So I bring the logic in behind to double check, to be a bit strategic about what I'm doing. So why wouldn't she go into this? First of all, because she's in the in the masculine all the time. You'll see. She doesn't have a benchmark in her consciousness of the benefits of moving into the feminine. And this part talks her out of it all the time, and you'll see why. So I'd say things like to her, well, when you have managed to rest when you go on holiday after 10 days and you're all edgy and edgy because you're doing nothing, when you finally do rest, what do you feel like? She goes, oh, it's amazing. I just feel so good. I just feel so inspired. After I've had a few days rest and I get some ideas and I start loving life again. And then I come back to work and I promise myself I'll never get back into just this state again. <laughs> and then, because it's compulsive and because it's a pattern, she does. So, this is what was going on. She didn't know it. She doesn't know it. No one knows what they don't know, which is why people have to work with me. Unless you get to the deep core root and the unconscious, nothing shifts. Nothing changes. So on the unconscious level, what had gone on, and I'll give you this setup. On the unconscious level, below the line, she had rejected her own feminine aspect. And you would not believe how many I was going to say women, but men as well. But a lot of women who are business people who have rejected their feminine. Once they reject their feminine, they build their business from the masculine, which leads to burnout, leads to being disconnected from intuition, softness, insight. When she was a child, she grew up in farm region. As a child... She loved creativity and art. 
She would draw and paint all the time. Then she would show her parents, she started to show her parents what she was doing. And her father and mother didn't validate her art. In fact, her father and I think her mother, from what I understand, both were like, what a waste of time. Art's just a waste of time. Because the parents, not their fault, growing up on farms, it's all hands on deck. Anything created is just a waste of time. Now, here we need to go with this. If you're a young artist with the soul of an artist, when you create art, you're pouring your, your inside, your heart and soul into that. Right? You, you, you define you as the art. <laughs> Interesting, like when I'm working with people, it, it's me, that's me that can read people. It's me that can read them. That's my skill set. I'm working with them. I'm working with them. It's me. Now, I'm an adult, so if someone doesn't believe me that I'm reading them or can read them, that doesn't happen, but if it did happen, I couldn't care to who. It's because I've got a strongly developed ego structure. I'm okay with who I am. But as a child, if that's who you are, you're pouring that into creativity because that's who you are on a soul level. And you get rejected and your parents don't understand it and they don't validate it and in fact almost rubbish it because it's not going to help you survive or it's not going to help you prosper. What use is you bringing that beauty into the world? Well, at the same time, the parents validated her two brothers who were top sportsmen. So they were like, oh, wow, you, you boys are just amazing. What you can do, incredible, incredible. And to the young artist, it's like, what a waste of time. So in the child's mind, as the art gets rejected, because it's come from the heart and soul of her, from her feminine side, she's going to go, oh, who I am doesn't belong in this family. Who I am. gets me rejected. Who I am isn't accepted. That means I must be no good. I must be useless. So a fundamental decision was made inside her psychology. Who knows what age that was? But it's a fundamental decision on an unconscious level. If a fundamental decision is made on an unconscious level, it's lifelong. You've made the choice. It's like a pact. So she made the pact well, I really want to fit into this family and I want to get validation like my brothers get and I can see that I only get validated by being in this because this is what my family validates. So what was really happening, <laughs> she had to be in this to feel like she was okay in life, like she was valid, like she belonged. Now this, this is, remember she's, this is years ago this happened, but she's still living from that unconscious script and rule. So, again, this is unconscious. You've got to get into the unconscious. That's where you've got to work with people that can help you get into the unconscious, because otherwise you don't see it and you believe your own bullshit. So, as an example, her mind would go, oh, I don't have time for this. That's not the real reason. She had other reasons too, you know, it's like, the real reason was, I'm not going near this because that got me rejected. Even though I love it and I really enjoy it, it gets me rejected. As simple as that, based on a childhood trauma. Now, what does she need to do now? Well, she's going to continue working with us in our programs in our bigger programs, and her role will be to heal this. So first of all, she's got to seal this, she's got to seal the games of her ego, but she'll need to heal this. Once she heals this, changes the belief systems here, the conscious mind will stop giving it excuses, the defense mechanism lies, and she will move into here. And she'll become like an effective business person. And an effective business person will go to here to be creative, come up with the ideas, she'll paint, she'll take time out, she'll rejuvenate, her adrenal system will start repairing itself, her gut lining will start repairing itself. 
because her um, all of her stress markers will decrease greatly. On a deeper level, she'll start to enjoy life. If you start to enjoy life, your immune system kicks up again. You heal more. But she will have better energy. She won't be reactive. She'll be centered. She'll be able to go back into this and implement off the ideas she gets from this side of herself. What will happen for this particular person as she goes here, she will probably let go of the business that she's in right now and she will develop a new business out of here based more on the feminine aspect of herself. Now, as she does this, because it was an early childhood trauma that got her out of her feminine, she, was, she doesn't know it, but she would have always felt quite disconnected and unhealthy in lots of ways. So once she starts to integrate this after healing that, she will start to connect to her, her feminine and start to feel feminine. As a woman, she will start to feel feminine. And in that feeling of femininity, she will also allow herself to receive. She will feel right because the feminine needs to feel in their feminine. And so everything beautiful comes from that for her. So as an example, without digging into it, and I haven't worked with her around this, I know that it would be very hard for her with this pattern to have good relationships in her life as well. So this whole thing heals this issue and challenge down here, will bring her back into balance, and she will just be a far more effective business person person. So again, key takeaways. When you're working and trying to work on yourself and you don't have someone that can guide you into your unconscious, it just makes it really hard for you because you don't see your unconscious. You don't know what's going on on the unconscious level. This particular lady has struggled with this for years, seen all sorts of coaches and within two appointments in a program structure with us. She has now uncovered all of this and what's really been going on and driving her unconsciously for years. She's met it and she's met it on a feeling level and that means her change and transformation is beginning. Anyway, I've got to go and run another program. So I hope you get a lot from that. Really important to understand feminine, masculine dynamic and where you're out of balance as a business person or investor. Ask any questions down below. Um, if you want work on your unconscious, come book a breakthrough workshop with us. And you'll just see the link on the website. I'll chuck it down below. But thanks, everyone. Hope you got a lot from it. Catch up.